everybody, and welcome to the Feminine Principle Podcast, Astrology for Authentic Living. My name is Mel, and I'm with Energetic Principles. And I'm Shauna with Neo Feminine Astrology. And in this episode, we'll be discussing the astrology for the week of June 19th and what we have titled Cancer Season, All the Feels. And the purpose <laughs> of this podcast is to give inspiration and guidance for this week with real life examples of what to expect. The three major aspects that we'll review for this week are the solstice, which is the summer solstice or the winter solstice, depending on your hemisphere, which we're deeming seasonal rebirth. We'll also mm. talk about the new moon in Cancer, which we are calling all the fields. <laughs> and lastly, we'll talk about Mars squaring Jupiter. Uh, the theme for that aspect is all's not fair in love and war. Mm. Uh, so we're really excited to share these with you. And um, I encourage you to remember that some of these transits will influence you more than others based on your personal birth chart. So notice what resonates with you most, take what you like, and always use your intuition and logic to decide what's best for you. Yes, absolutely. You will get a little ding in your brain when it says, hello, pay yep. attention to me. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, yes, we do have some very exciting aspects to talk about, um, especially since we're moving into this solstice season. Um, but let's mm -hmm. kick off this week's episode with a quick rundown of the moon's path through the zodiac. And some other minor as aspects for you astro geeks out there. Um, so Monday the 19th, the moon will be moving into Taurus, where our emotional energy will slow down a bit and take a more grounded approach, uh, since this is the sign of the moon's exaltation. It will be uh, very strong, um, and it will give us that grounded feel that we might be needing at this time. Um, on Wednesday the 21st, the moon will move into Gemini, where our emotions will get a little more heady and our dualistic, uh, Jekyll and Hyde-like nature might come out uh, on those days. Um, and that is also the day that Mercury, uh, who rules Gemini, is going to be moving into Cancer and will be conjunct the Sun, um, leading our minds into a little bit more watery depths there. Uh, and then on Friday, the 23rd, we'll have that new moon in Cancer, which uh, Shauna just spoke about, that we're going to go into great detail a little bit later in the episode. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, and then on Saturday, the 24th, we have Venus and Taurus, who will be trining Pluto and Capricorn, which will bring a grounded energy. Um, and since we have all those planets moving into Cancer, this would be a great day to renew your living space and get in touch with your surroundings um, and, and revive that a little bit for the season. Uh, and then last but not least, on Sunday, the 25th, the moon's going to move into Leo a little later in the day, uh, and Mars and Cancer uh, will try Neptune and Pisces, which will um, could be a very creative day uh, with all that water energy going on. So any creative um, people out there or people that want to get a little creative, you might want to jot that day down uh, for Sunday fun day. Mm. Um, so yeah, so that's what we have going on for uh, this week on some of the minor stuff uh, to pay attention to. Um, but we can go right into, uh, our first aspect here, or, uh, let's say event, <laughs> since <laughs> it is, it happens four times or twice a year rather. Um, and that is the summer solstice, which, uh, Shauna, uh, and I have deemed seasonal rebirth. Uh, and the summer solstice is going to be exact on Tuesday, June 20th at 9.24 PM Pacific standard time. Um, and yeah, so we're going to be switching seasons. It's going to be officially summer, uh, and we're going to be kicking off, you know, the summer fun. So, uh, Shauna, <laughs> lead us in with your, uh, the quote that you have for the summer solstice. Yes. So this quote is by writer Sarah Addison Allen. She says, she understood that the hardest times in life to go through were when you were transitioning from one version of yourself to another. Mm. And I really love this because it speaks so beautifully to this time of the solstice. And um, the solstice actually happens um, when the sun moves into the sign of cancer. And uh, we'll talk about this a lot more in just a moment, but um, what really strikes me about this time is I'm reminded, uh, of 
how our culture really revolves around this idea of the sun and the moon and cycles. Um, we have, um, the solstices, which Mel said happen twice a year. And then we have the equinoxes, which happen, um, twice a year and they, they usher in, um, this time of night and day, et cetera. And they're all marked by the cardinal signs going in the sun, going into the cardinal signs. And so, um, it is this time of transitioning. It's this time of rebirth. And sometimes that can be exciting. Sometimes it can feel scary. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, we're excited. Um, I'm excited about the solstice. <laughs> well, let us just disclaim here that we're two cancers. So if anybody's excited <laughs> about the sun moving into cancer in the summer solstice, yeah. it's us. Uh, so we're, we're both very ready. Um, for uh, this you know, watery cardinal energy to come around because we resonate with it on a daily basis. So <laughs> mm-hmm. on the regular, uh, on the <laughs> regular. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, like Strana was saying with the, it does happen twice a year and it's marked um, because it's, it gives us the longest day of the year. Or, you know, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, the shortest day of the year, which is really hard for me to wrap my mind around, but all you <laughs> Aussies out there, or Brazilians or South American. You know, um, yeah, that's a, it's an interesting concept for us Northerners, uh, to, as we're moving into summer, you're moving into winter. Um, but I find it very interesting because solstice, uh, whether it's your summer solstice, uh, for us in the North or, um, the winter solstice for those in the South hemisphere, uh, solstice comes from the Latin word solsti- solstitium. And it's interesting because soul obviously is the sun. And then that, that stit, that stitium is like a stationary or stopped. Um, and so why they put those two things together and how we get solstice is basically the sun kind of stops for a few days around the solstice. Um, whether, uh, to where it seems like the day, uh, and, and the night or it's, it's the same. It kind of, it, it keeps the same timing. Uh, for a few days. So uh, with the summer, we're feeling these long, long days of sun where we just get to gain this nourishment from the solar light. Uh, and then in the, uh, the wind, uh, the southern hemisphere, you know, you're getting that the shortest day of the year. And it's, um, it's just a very powerful time to where everything's kind of stopped and we're just engaged in this moment of, of the rebirth, like Shauna was saying, the switch that happens now into that cardinal energy. Um, Mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm very excited for the sun to stop for a moment so that we can enjoy this, uh, this solar light because it's a time of celebration, right? You know, Mm -hmm. let's let's celebrate. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And what I find really fascinating about the solstices is that, uh, it's, it's, it's literally an astronomical event, like everything in astrology, right? But it's Mm -hmm. the time, um, for this solstice, it's when the northern hemisphere is facing the sun more directly because of the tilt of the earth, and then the southern hemisphere is tilted most away. So that's why the southern, our um, Australian, etc. people are in the thick of winter right now because they're farther away from the sun. Um, and and then things start to switch so that uh, the northern hemisphere after the solstice is going to start moving away. And so, um, yeah, it's, it is just this pivot point. And yeah. well, and that's like, where the equinoxes come in because they're kind of the pivot of the solstice. Uh, yes, in, exactly. Like you're they're, saying. And equinox actually means, um, if I remember right, it actually means equal, um, because it's when the, the day and the night are completely uh, equal in time, yeah. equal in length. And so, um, yeah, so I just love this idea that we're the, the solar and lunar, the night and the day, the light and the dark is so deeply embedded in our culture. And we really track these cycles. And um, I think it, it speaks to the idea of rebirth um, that, the darkness is necessary. The darkness is the period before rebirth. Exactly. Um, and that can be a really beautiful time. Yes. Um, which we will be going into a little later here when we talk about that new moon in cancer. It feels like everything's oh, yeah. really li- lining up well for uh, this rebirth mm-hmm. to happen. Um, so just a quick little note of what's going to be going on during that summer solstice uh, when we, we enter um, 
into that rebirth. Uh, so mm-hmm. we're basically have a cancer party going on, right? You know, the, mm-hmm. uh, Mars is already there. Mercury is right on its coattails. Mercury is actually at 29 degrees that day when we move into the, the solstice. Um, but it's right on the heels. So that, uh, you know, it, we're, we're stepping into cancer season where we're, it's the, the motions are there. We're going to be very centered around our security and, uh, you know, how we sustain ourselves and nourish ourselves and our own emotional foundation. Um, and, uh, as Shauna was saying earlier about the aspects that we're going to be talking about in this program, uh, the last aspect we talk, we're going to be talking about is that Mars square Jupiter. Uh, so keep in mind when the solstice is happening, um, and these transits are kicking into gear, that aspect is also building. Um, so I feel mm-hmm. that everything we're talking about here today in this episode is kind of starting with this moment and we're going to feel the build right when that, you know, clock time, uh, clock chimes zero, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> and we're right set up to rebirth at this solstice. Um, so a lot of energy going on around this, um, and a lot of cancer energy. So. Yeah. And so for, uh, the people listening that the cancerian themes that might come up for you again, like we said in the beginning, it really depends on where you have cancer in your birth chart, how you relate to that energy. Um, but it's definitely a theme around, uh, family roots, your inner world feelings, of course, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> empathy. um, and so These can be very literal, like it could be um, literal situations that are coming up around your actual home where you take residence or with your uh, family of origin, Um, or it can be more metaphorical. It can be uh, how it is that you feel on the inside, uh, your metaphorical home. Um, It could also be uh, your foundation, your roots. Maybe you get more interested in exploring, uh, your genealogy or something of that sort. Mm, Um, so I, you know, uh, there is such a wide variety of how Cancerian energy can manifest. It can be very literal or it can be more of an internal, um, manifestation. So I would just notice like, if there's something that is like coming up around any of those themes, notice how that um, you may want to explore that over the next few months. Yes, uh, absolutely. Because here we are talking about that rebirth and cancer. Um, when you look at uh, where cancer sits housewise in a chart, it sits right at the bottom of the chart. Um, and that is where uh, you can't really see things uh, when when it's at the bottom, that fourth house energy. Um, and mm-hmm. a lot of people, uh, a lot of astrologers assimilate that with uh, closure of some sort. So just know that in the seasonal rebirth, we might be kind of like, we might be ending a, 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 our own, a, an aspect of our si- ourself that's been a foundation for a long time. Um, and mm. now we can like build this new platform to stand upon. Um, cause our feelings are going to be lit up. Like, you know, they're, the unconscious motivations are there. Our intuitive self is going to be speaking to us and guiding us along uh, the way for the next uh, 30 day cycle. Um, and it's going to have all these me- messages and that we're going to really want to pay attention to our feelings so that we can get our a solid foundation in place uh, based around us feeling good about where we're going. Um, and, you know, because the solstice is all about joy, too, and celebration. So. I would say this is the perfect time to get in touch with what, you know, kind of what brings you emotional joy and how can you make that your mm-hmm. foundation and and discard whatever it was that is kind of keeping you back or like old emotional pains because you know the cancer also has to do with the childhood. Um and that's where our foundation is based upon is our early experiences in life. Uh so a lot mm-hmm. of us might be kind of um uh, Sean and I, and I have been sharing snake analogies because we keep having <laughs> snake encounters of and yes. shedding that skin. I know that's very scorpionic, but at the same time here, we are talking about rebirth and, um, what deeper skin can you possibly have than that emotional foundation that we were basically raised upon? Um, so yeah, I think this is a great time to maybe, uh, take that snake analogy and shed that old uh, emotional skin of sorts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I 100% agree. And w- whenever I think of cancer, uh, I'm, 
I'm reminded of something that I read a long time ago uh, in one of Stephen Forrest's books, uh, The Astrologer. And he, he really said that uh, cancer is all about emotional intelligence. It's about um, having like, okay, yes, I'm feeling all of these feelings. And how do I process all of this stuff that's happening on the inside so that I can have, as you're saying, Mel, like a, a healthy, solid foundation and um, so I think it's a really beautiful time to honor yourself, to honor what it is that you're feeling in any given moment. And that feeling, it doesn't have to define you. It doesn't have to mean anything about you. Sometimes it's a feeling to be acted on. Sometimes it's a feeling that, uh, that you feel and then it passes. And um, the more that you can be emotionally aware with yourself, the more that you can have this um, really rich emotional intelligence so that you can move through the world in a way that is true to, to yourself and to your mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yes. I, yes, <laughs> that what she just said. <laughs> yes. That sounds great, um, right? I'm working yeah, on that, it. Yeah, <laughs> that right there. That, uh, um, and so to play off that, you know, we, we're talking about the bottom of the chart. We're talking about self nourishment, you know, mm. how I would say the best, one of the best ways to start off this period is to really get in touch with, uh, how you nurture your own self, um, and allowing yourself to nurture yourself more like pamper yourself, like take the time and like baby yourself, like just take a minute and like, just be that little, little girl or that little boy that just, you know, uh, doesn't, it doesn't mean any harm and just, it has this emotional freedom to it and just loves life, you know, just whatever your heart, like your heart said, your, you know, emotions are, uh, lighting up about like, go do that. Just, you mm -hmm. know, and if things are keeping you down and you're feeling obligation and duty to certain things, um, and you just don't want to do them anymore, say no, just say <laughs> no. And, Nurture yourself at this time because, you know, as I say, you know, put your oxygen mask on first before you put on your, <laughs> your partners. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say that with this, uh, emotional energy and that being at the bottom of the chart, uh, nurture yourself so you can ground, um, your own emotions, um, enough to where you're able to really nurture other people because that's where, I mean, cancers, we're givers where we have no choice but to nurture you. <laughs> You better take no, it. we do, we do, but we, it's just something that's in us. And we're, oh. I mean, even when I was a teenager, my friends would be like, you're like, you're like the mother of the group, you know? And that's just where we just have it in us, whether you're mother or not, you know, if you're a cancer and you don't have kids, that's perfectly fine. Like we go around nurturing people, uh, every day and animals and, you know, just plants, all, all that stuff, which is wherever we can get it. <laughs> We're nurturing. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, you know, I really love the tarot cards that, that came up, um, for this, for the solstice smell, because they're so appropriate for this energy, this Cancerian energy that we're talking about, where it's like emotional and it's nurturing and, there's like uh, emotion is related to um, water and the cups, et cetera. So um, yes. I'm curious, will you so tell cups. us what, <laughs> yeah, like what yeah. kind of came up? <laughs> yes, we are overfloweth with cup action <laughs> in this uh, uh, for this tarot spread for the solstice. So what mm -hmm. we have is we have the ace of cups as the focus. And then the grounding is the two of cups, you know, two consecutive cards, um, two very emotionally <laughs> consecutive cards. Um, <laughs> and that ace of cups is really all about a new emotional start. And that's what this cancer season is all about is getting in touch with our emotions. Uh, we are really feeling them now, you know, they're, they're just lit up and we can embrace them. Um, and get all those emotional feels. And with that two of cups as a grounding, uh, I think that those are going to really be related to partnerships. Um, and especially with that, uh, Jupiter going direct has already gone direct in Libra and we have that Mars square building. Um, there's a lot of partnership energy that's kind of building this week. Um, and especially how we emotionally connect with, um, with our partners and our, and it's not just our relate, you know, uh, 
relationships. It can be familial relationships. It can be business relationships. Uh, wherever you're close with someone else and you share um, that kind of you, the, your emotional part of yourself with that person, um, even if it's down to being emotionally connected to building this business, you share it with a partner and you mm-hmm. both are on that same wavelength. Um, so yeah. So, uh, Shauna, what do you think about the Ace of Cups being the focus of this solstice? Yeah. So I just want to share with everyone that the way that we structure this podcast is, uh, you know, we always look at the aspects first and hash it out. And then Mel draws the tarot cards and I'm always amazed. I'm like, Oh, like, of course. So it's like, no, it's, it's too perfect that it's the Ace of Cups, which is this cup, like <laughs> overflowing with water over, you know, the, and it's related to overflowing emotions, et cetera. And then the Two of Cups, which is this really beautiful image of um, a man and a woman um, making some type of exchange with uh, with cups. And yes. um, what feels, what strikes me about this um this aspect in this whole entire week is that this is not a week to be in your shell. This is not a week to like seclude yourself and work out all of your shit in like in seclusion. This is a time to be emotionally aware and then to engage with other people. It's a time yeah. to, um, to, to relate. It's a time to say, Hey, like I'm feeling, or I'm feeling vulnerable or or, you know, angry, or upset or whatever it is. And then I'm going to engage with you in a way that is conscious in a way that is, um, builds connection. Um, and that's something that I see in these tarot cards. And then I see in the other aspects that we'll talk about in a moment too. But, um, I just, I think that's really beautiful. And I encourage everyone to, to, um, you know, to not seclude yourself, to get out there and to, to, um, connect with people as well. Yes. Cause I love that, you know, like we're talking about the two of cups, like you're just saying, and it's about sharing emotional sharing with someone else. Um, mm-hmm. and here we have that ace of cups, uh, which is the focus and, uh, it, it's, it's the first cup card. So this isn't, and what makes it so strong is that it's like this burst of emotional energy. Mm-hmm. It's not, mm-hmm. it's not fully developed. Uh, it's overflowing with, ah, I'm here, you know, <laughs> like pay attention to me. <laughs> um, and it, it, it really gives us this because it's so much of it. It gives us this new emotional start where we can open ourselves up to greater love and really renewal, like renew our own relationship, uh, with our own hearts and our, ourselves. And in turn, we can share that with others. Um, so I, especially, uh, Sean was just saying with the other aspects that are coming into play here and kind of, we're painting this bigger picture, um, that, uh, that new emotional start could really be centered around where you haven't shared your feelings before. Like maybe you've had these feelings and they've been overrunneth, you know, this cup is just (laughs) flowing, but you haven't been able to put yourself out there and allow yourself to be vulnerable um, in a situation with another person to where you can really share what you're feeling. Uh, and in turn, that's going to really nurture and support your relationship because you're out in the open. You're, you, you, you're flowing for all to see. <laughs> um, and so you can make, you can take that however you want, <laughs> but, uh, um, but yeah, so, you know, we're, it's really about connecting with the other and open yourself up emotionally and just know that if any of you out there have been feeling down in the dumps or feeling a bit depressed, especially in this Gemini cycle that we're just going through. And especially with all these Saturn transits, uh, mm-hmm. that just happened, um, this really is an emotional renewal and, uh, that I can see that depression lifting a bit, especially with that sun coming out. We're in summer. Um, it just feels like there's just going to be a a more joyful state and a a reason to celebrate our, our emotions are going to want to celebrate life at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with all of this water, it definitely has, um, a cleansing kind of feel yes. to it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, with, we've all heard of summer love, right? You know, <laughs> it's, uh, that's what, uh, yeah, I know. I hope we're all trying to think Greece right now. <laughs> <laughs> summer 
Protected <laughs> by the sea. You know, whatever. <laughs> but um it's gonna all come back to me now. But uh mm-hmm. yeah, so a lot of you out there might be experiencing if you don't have a partner or if you have a partner and it's been a little bit on the rocks, like this could be a great renewal um for that relationship, or you can find that person that you're looking for. Um Especially for uh, Capricorns and Pisces, I would say Capricorn is going to be lighting up that seventh house of uh, partnership. Um, and mm-hmm. Pisces is going to have that fifth house, you know, um, that that love aspect, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. So what, you guys look out for that. But everybody, everybody's on love alert right now. Whether you find <laughs> that with someone else or you find a new love uh, for yourself or you find a new love in the work that you're doing or you, you know, all the, so many different lo- new love for your kids. Like there's so many different ways to um, really feel that overflow of emotions um, towards something, mm-hmm. I think. Um, and then most importantly, not most importantly, maybe this comes from the artist in me speaking, but creativity is really at its peak uh, mm-hmm. during this time. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah especially with that ace of cups there. Um, so if anybody of you are working on projects, especially with other people that Libra energy, I mean, Libra just has to do with beauty and creating, um, lovely things in life too. It doesn't necessarily have to be with a partner, but chances are, if any of you are out there working creatively with someone else like this, yeah, get in there. This is the time where both of you could be, um, really in a good place to create some amazing things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lots of momentum for that. Yeah. Mm. True that. Um, so I just want to share a quick analogy, crab analogy here, uh, that I always <laughs> tell myself because, you know, we're, we're both cancers here and sometimes you got to give yourself little pep talks just to remind you, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. how, how things, <laughs> how things work. Um, and so when you're navigating these cancer waters, because it's cardinal water, it is watery, <laughs> like it's, Water, it's action water. It is that ra- that river is flowing, basically, <laughs> and it's going forward. Um, so the way I like to look at uh, just cancer in general, because we are so focused on security um, and in the past, we get caught up with uh, what's happened to us in the past and how we relate emotionally to past experiences. Uh, so I always like to look at this, you know, little crab, this little crab's is attached to a a rock and it, you know, the waves are splashing, uh, that surf is up and it's just getting pounded repeatedly by these waves, but it's holding on, holding on to this little Mm -hmm. rock, just like, you know, oh, well, it just, ah, one more hit, ah, you know, but what happens when that little crab lets go? That crab just floats with the ocean and everything is so easy because it's going with the flow. It's not getting pounded by the waves anymore. It's now part of the momentum of the wave itself. And it's like experiencing the, the, uh, the life of the ocean rather than staying stuck in this one place, holding on and just getting emotionally pounded repeatedly. <laughs> uh, so what cancers have to learn and being in this cancer season is a little bit of detachment. You know, mm. how can we let go in certain areas? Um, so that we can see like this ace of cups with some new renewal, uh, you know, so we're going to have to let go of certain things in our life and become more detached so we can really rebirth ourselves in this arena. Mm. Yeah. I love that. I love that analogy, Mel, so much. Um, because yeah, the shadow side of cancer is being overly sentimental. It's being, um, attached to the past attached to memories attached to playing, uh, certain patterns over and over again. Um, Mm -hmm. or even, yeah, being literally being clingy. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yes. (laughs) That too. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And, and we all get to experience the, the full spectrum of these kinds of energy. So I love that, that, um, encouragement to go with the flow so that, so that things can flow so that we can make these healthy connections and so that we can feel more, um, more completely. Mm. Yeah. I, Thanks. yes. All right. All right. So we've addressed this summer solstice. Um, so, uh, we have a few questions for you to take with you to maybe ask yourself during this time. 
Um, and some questions I would ask regarding, uh, the sun moving into cancer and our, uh, yearly summer solstice or winter solstice, wherever you may be. Um, I would ask where in my life can I find the cause for celebration? Mm. I would ask how stable is my foundation? Is there room for inner renovation? You know, cancer is about the home. So your internal home, uh, might need a little renovation at this time. <laughs> um, I would ask, where do I need security in my life? What does it take for me to feel safe and sound? I would ask, what areas of my life bring me emotional joy? How can I nurture these areas? And lastly, I would ask, how can I give unconditional love more freely? How can I open myself up more to another? Mm. So there's, love there's, that. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, cancer really is about, un, uh, about unconditional love, you know, and the other side of cancer is Capricorn. And that's where you get that conditional, those conditional aspects that come in. Um, so we're really developing unconditional love for, uh, most importantly for ourselves. And then we're going to share that on to other people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, and I think that's a beautiful um, transition to like th- another layer of this is the new moon in Cancer. And yes, I love how this is all happening in the same week because the solstice is this rebirth, it's a celebration. And then the new moon is al- also a new cycle and it's in Cancer. Um, so, and yeah. we're deeming all the feels. <laughs> I'm having all the feels about this week. I'm feeling it. <laughs> not even, I love it. It's just starting. Not even a, we record this a few days earlier, so it hasn't even happened, but we're ready. <laughs> um, so yeah. uh, just so you know, with that new moon in Cancer, it's going to be a couple days after that solstice. Uh, and it's going to be exact on Friday, June 23rd at 7.31 p.m. Pacific time, and it's going to be at two degrees cancer. So, Shauna, give us the quote that you have for this new moon. Uh, So this is a favorite uh, Rumi quote, quote by Rumi. Mm. Uh, He says, let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you really love. It will not lead you astray. Mm. Um, and I love this so much because it speaks to the new moon energy and the Cancerian energy both together because the new moon is this time of internal reflection. It's when we're all connected to our intuition. We're connected to our inner world more than the outer material world. And, um, with the Cancerian energy, there is this pull. Cancer is a cardinal energy. So there's this forward movement. Um, and so, yeah, the new moon in Cancer, it's like, what are you being drawn towards? What are mm-hmm. you going to create out in the world? What are you going to take from inside of your heart and to bring out to share? What are you going to lead with? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's like you're saying it's a, it's a cardinal moon, new moon. You know, this is, this is one of those, um, new moons that is an active push forward. Um, mm-hmm. it, and, and because the new moon is one of the most powerful times of manifestation, like, yeah, it's a dark period where we're going to take a second, go within. And we basically, uh, kind of go in and listen and intuit what's really worthy of our undertaking. Um, and so, in that moment when, we're, you know, this is a perfect time to connect with our emotions, to see what really lights our heart up and that we're able to put our energy behind um, and push forward with. Because the few days after that new moon is a really, really powerful manifestation time. Um, so just get connected with that um, and really push because there's magic in the air right now. Like all new moons have that magic, but a cardinal new, new moon really kind of... Mm, like, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know, the, the engine revs and it's ready to, you know, squeal out of the, <laughs> off the track, um, so, to some extent. So, um, if you're working on whatever you're working on during this cancer season, like this is a good time to plant those seeds and uh, really push that forward for, you know, Cardinals new beginnings, you know, so this is a new momentum, so to speak. 
which really ties in with our seasonal rebirth, right? Yeah. And and I love I think this energy that the the moving forward is emphasized so much more because this new moon is sitting with Mars. It's conjunct Mars and Mars is action. It's doing its energy. It is physical energy that is put out into the world. And so it's like, yeah, like you may be feeling like jazzed and ready to go. There may be some momentum there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you know, the, not only is Mars there, but Mercury is right on this new moon. I mean, it's right there. Mm-hmm. So our feelings and our perceptions are really going to be on the same page. Uh, this day and they're not always on the same page. You know, our mind and our, our heart don't always talk. In fact, mostly that's the trouble we get into is because one is speaking <laughs> a little strongly and more strongly than the other. Um, so I feel that it's a blessing that that Mercury, uh, is right there in Cancer as well because our mind is going to want to be on board with our emotions at this time. It's going to perceive our emotions more clearly. Um, and that in tune turn can be a, a power, more powerful manifestation aspect as well, because, uh, both states of awareness are on the same page. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, and this all depends on where it happens in your chart too, where this action is going to take place, you know, cause it, you know, depending on where you're, you know, how your chart's set up and what sign you are, you know, for us cancers, we're really going to be working on a new us. Like this is our time <laughs> to to get in touch with our identity and who we are and make a, a active push. Um, you know, Aries might be out there, you know, really tapping into their home and foundation and what makes them emotionally safe and in, in the home right now. Um, so it really just depends on your chart where you're putting all that emotional energy and where you're getting those feels and where you're manifesting, uh, forward at this mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And, you know, I'm really curious to see what the emotional tone is out in the world, because um, this is a this is a a strong Mars kind of energy um, with this new moon. And then we'll talk about Mars squaring Jupiter in just a moment. Um, But this is all uh, Mel and I were talking earlier um, that this is all building towards Mars opposing Pluto the sun opposing Pluto and this making um, a T-square with Jupiter and um, Mars Pluto is um, that is intense. (laughs) Um, There's a lot of like repressed anger that might come up. There may just be a general feeling of emotional intensity. Um, And so I would really pay attention to um, where there is any sense of like, anger or, um, empowerment or feeling frustrated or anything that feels hot, like anything where you're just like, Hmm, like I'm, I'm being activated by this situation. Um, and not that it has to be a bad thing. It might be pleasant. It might be unpleasant, but, uh, I would just really pay attention, especially around the new moon, because those are themes that may continue to unfold. And, with it building towards the Pluto opposition, the more that that we can be aware of what it is that's coming up, what it is that's bubbling up to the surface, um, the more pleasant that process will be. Uh, the more <laughs> we can, uh, you know, work through it in a way that's harmonious. Yeah, you know, because we have uh, failed to say in this moment uh, is that this, I like to say this is the mooniest of all moons because... Yes. <laughs> it is, you know, the moon is ruled by cancer. Like if there is going to be a moon that is, you know, moon, <laughs> the, the quintessential moon, this moon's it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and I, you know, cause the moon also represents the public as, you know, Shauna was just saying. Um, and so our, you know, our feelings and the public at large is going to be in, in sync for this bigger push going on. But I find that very interesting, right? When you're saying, I wonder what will be going on out there, you know, in the public arena in the world. And it just dawned on me. I was like, wait a second. Isn't our, isn't our, uh, the United States natal chart, our sun is at 13 degrees cancer and it's going to be mm-hmm. right conjunct that Mars, right squaring mm-hmm. that Jupiter, which we'll go into in a little bit later. Um, so I don't have an exact prediction for that, but I would just keep your eyes open for a little bit of 
nationalism at this time uh, in, in feeling that. And that's why, I mean, here we have in the States, we have our uh, July 4th where we're, you know, because cancer is a very patriotic energy. You know, it's about the home, whether that's your mm-hmm. home and your foundation that you actually have, your home, your city, your state, your country. You know, if we could just get on board with uh, our home being planet Earth, <laughs> we might be in a better position. <laughs> but uh, we're still uh, we're self segregated in these in these realms. But um, so, yeah, there's kind of that push of, uh, you know, patriotism a little bit here. And especially with that square, which we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, you know, I, this is a time when our sensitivity is going to be turned up and it's just really here for us to get in touch with our own, you know, moods and our emotions and why, you know, especially when we take things personally, because cancer is so sensitive that Mm -hmm. the, the little bittiest of slight that could possibly come out of someone else's mouth that they didn't even think of it. They, what they said is not even close to, you know, what we think they actually mean. And so people with this cancer energy, especially cancer moons, um, uh, you're just going to be more, little, not, I don't want to say on edge because that's not quite the energy I'm looking for, but if it's something people could say something at this time that you might just take offense to your emotions might be like, Oh, what do you, what do you mean? You get these, all these layers of emotion on it. And those layers of emotion are really building from these old past experiences that we had that we haven't let go of. Um, and so, uh, you know, someone could say that there, there's a little bit too much salt on the eggs. <laughs> you know, you cook some <laughs> eggs. They're too salty. And then that takes you down to a spiral of like, oh, well, when there's salt, with the salt and I try to do my best and then this happens, you know. And that's, <laughs> that's kind of how sometimes the cancer energy can work. Um, so I just want to do a quick plug for a friend of mine and a fellow SDAS uh, member for the Astrological Society here in San Diego, uh, Simone Butler. She just put out a book, uh, that came out, uh, June 1st called Moon Power, Lunar Rituals for Connecting with Your Inner Goddess. Uh, mm-hmm. fabulous book set up really nice. It's, um, I highly recommend it. You can get it on Amazon prime two day delivery. Uh, mm-hmm. but for this new, for this new moon in cancer, she, I'm not going to go into the whole meditation. Um, cause I would like you to check out her book, but she really asks for you to get in touch with your own inner child and to kind of, uh, re, re regress, do a little regression in a sense to get in touch with that, how that child felt. Um, and, what really makes up our emotional foundation because, you know, here we are manifesting. We're manifesting this powerful cancer energy, but we want to do it right. Um, so especially in that quiet of the new moon, it would be a great time to go in and really get in touch with your own inner child, uh, and those that emotional foundation of your childhood and what that really means to you and what is good to carry forward with and what might be. Uh, need to be left in the past so that we can be in the here and now. Um, so yeah, check out Simone Butler's moon power. Uh, highly recommend it. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Cause I, um, cancer is patriotic. It's sentimental, but then those, um, those qualities, they can be, I keep, I get this image of like a screen. Um, and so whenever, we interact with the world. It's like, what is the screen that things are being filtered through Mm. um, that are experiences from childhood? And um, yeah, I I love that from Simone, because I think that when we, we don't have to like get rid of the screens, but at least when we know that they're there, it can be um, very empowering. Yeah. And well, mm-hmm. and Simone's also a cancer too. Here we are, a whole cancer crew <laughs> coming out, <laughs> coming out, talking about this moon. Um, yeah. but it, it's true because we really, that foundation that we're built upon, um, and a lot of it has to do with our parents. And once again, here we, you know, the moon is ruled by, is represents the mother and uh, that nurturing that we received from her, um, or the lack of it, depending on, uh, you know, what your luck of the draw was in a sense. Um, so, That's where we really highlight around, uh, security and our own insecurities based on Mm -hmm. that, those holes and those, that emotional foundation. Um, 
So this new moon is giving us a, a new chance to like highlight, you know, get in touch as, as that moon starts to go forward and we're seeing that crescent, that silvery light just start to like show us, you know, that, that little bit of illumination, we can really start to manifest a new ways to be more secure in our own foundation and hold ourselves, um, in, you know, in, a, in an emotionally rooted place uh, that supports us rather than, you know, drags us down. Like we want a cement foundation. We don't want cement on our feet and then we're thrown into the river. <laughs> you know, like yeah. we want to <laughs> we be held, you know, like in a solid place, not stuck to something drowning in our own emotions because they're just outdated. Um, so, you know, just detach uh, get a get a better perspective around what it is and th- that you feel and th- the reality of it because once again Mercury is sitting right there, um, and even though Mercury in Cancer is not as logic as say you know Mercury in Aquarius or something, um, <laughs> it's still the still it's very still that... subjective. I have that natally, so I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... she's, like, she's like, no, <laughs> it's it's it'll be on the side of the moon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but you know, most of all, like they, this is the time of year where we just want to connect with our home and our family and, uh, eat some delicious food. Like the summer we bring out the barbecue, we invite people over, we have pool parties, <laughs> you know? Um, so it's, it is a time of just a joyful connection, um, as well. So all that being said, you know, mm-hmm. there's... There's a lot of room for growth, I think, in this in this cycle, which really goes back to that seasonal rebirth of uh, the solstice that we're talking about. Yeah, I agree. I think lots of room for growth emotionally, yeah. spiritually. Um, I think it could feel like a a deep and rich time, and and especially for the cardinal signs as well, especially for Aries, Cancers, Libras, and Capricorns. Um, for sure, all of us, but those signs, um, I wonder if they may be feeling it more intensely. Yes, that's true. Cause they're going to get those, those more challenging aspects. Um, mm-hmm. but what I love about this new moon too, and the fact that, uh, the, the fact that, you know, he, you know, the, the new moon sets up a cycle as we've talked mm-hmm. about several times before, you know, and we're, we're, we're working towards that culmination of the full moon and the full moon is going to be in Capricorn and Capricorn is the antithesis of this emotion. You know, speaking, of, I have a Capricorn moon. In fact, my <laughs> birthday this year is going to be on that full moon. Um, I'm going to be recreating my own birth in a sense, which is very interesting. But so here we have all, all these feels, right. And we're building this emotional energy and we're building it and building it and understanding it. And it might take us over at certain times. But the beauty of that full moon, which of course we're going to talk about in a couple of weeks, um, is that that Capricorn energy is earth. It's grounded. It's a little more detached. It's able to look at things in a more practical way. So, uh, we're, we're just building this practicality around our own emotions so that they're, they have that foundation. Um, and it's a secure one. Uh, so I, I, I like where we're building, building with this. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially those two signs being, uh, we were talking about this earlier. It says, you know, money signs and, uh, building businesses and, and just being more conscious around money security. These are still security issues. Uh, so just know at this time uh, that that's really going to come up where you're, you you want to, going to want to feel more secure and you're probably going to want to make moves to make yourself in that position where you want to make more money or you want a job that gives you more, um, room for growth or, uh, you want a new home that, uh, isn't falling apart <laughs> or, you know, mm-hmm. like what, what have you, um, yeah, yeah definitely. So. Cancer and Capricorn are definitely, uh, cr- they crave security. They crave that sense of safety, whether it's emotionally on the inside or in the physical world with Capricorn. Yeah, really. definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, let's, so let's talk about some of the tarot cards that came up uh, with, uh, this new moon and cancer. And uh, real quick, uh, at the, two degrees. So, uh, in past episodes, I've referred to Christopher Witecki's system of, uh, steps, step system for the numbers. And two is the degree of cancer. So there, <laughs> so there, it literally is the degree of feelings. So chances are this new moon really, like, not only are we having that new moon in cancer with the, with, 
the moon in its sign of, you know, most powerful sign it could be in, uh, with at two degrees, which is, I feel, you know, it, it all the feels really That's is crazy. Could have, could have named it more appropriately. Um, <laughs> So here we have the new, uh, the new moon tarot cards. We have the Sun of Pentacles as the focus, and we have the Two of Cups once again as the grounding. Um, mm. so sharing our emotions is is really the, you know, the ground floor of this all, and where where we're uh, tapping into that energy of how we can open ourselves up and share more. Um, and with that Sun of Pentacles there, it's about you know, steady perseverance of being able to do that, like being reliable uh, to your partner um, and then being reliable to you and basically staying the course um, and being dedicated to that partnership um, so that your relationship can, you know, because if, if you were getting a new relationship, summer love, you might be making mm -hmm. new connections with someone where you're taking it, you know, gradual progress one at a time um, and just feeling it out. But you're committed to seeing to where it goes. Or you're in a committed relationship and it's been, uh, you know, rocky here and there. Um, but now you have new routines in place and you have new ways of relating and seeing things and, and just taking your time with each other and you can see growth there. Um, so Shauna, what do you think about these cards for the new moon? Yeah. So I'm just really struck by the sun of pentacles. I think that's a really interesting, um, I think it, it reflects the Mars and Cancer energy where it's like there's there's a focus. There's like, okay, I'm going to do something. And then that's supported by the Two of Cups, this like emotional union. And um, I think it's just another layer that emphasizes emotional connection and taking what it is that you feel and then moving your inner world into the outer world, which is what the new moon is, is all about. So, um, yeah. so yeah, I think it's really great. <laughs> oh, well, I, you know, and like I was saying earlier, here we are coming off of all these Saturn transits that mm -hmm. happened in, in why we we're in Gemini. Like we were just hitting Saturn one after another, Mars, sun, Mercury, mm -hmm. you know, and so we have had to steadily persevere through things and just keep a, a gradual pace. And now we're getting that same type of Saturnian energy around our own emotions and our partnerships with other people and um, staying the course with the people that we're dedicated to and um, le and really developing our emotions to cultivate this, uh, you know, more reliable um, you know, cause here we are once again talking about security. What's more secure than routine? You know, mm -hmm. every day you, you develop a rhythm with yourself and another person. Um, and just being in that rhythm, um, you know, and going cause slow going, you know, cause it, that's the thing with summer love too. Sometimes we get a little, we're, re we're ready to like jump in and it's all, we're all ready and I'll marry you three days after knowing you or something, you know? <laughs> um, so this is really just kind of saying that the, you know, the, all those emotions that we're having right now. And especially for those of you that are partnering up, like take your time, you're building something, you know, like we, when our emotions get so, you know, ready to go and you're really feeling it. A lot of times people can be a little more impul like emotionally impulsive. Um, so I like this card to really kind of ground that energy, connect with your emotions, uh, steadily work at them. And really uh, develop a solid rhythm so that you feel more grounded in your own emotional self, because that's essentially what this earth is really focusing on is, you know, just staying grounded in that in that emotional energy. Mm. Yeah. And uh, as as you're speaking about this, Mel, I'm really loving this progression of the sun, um, the sun and Mars. Uh, were opposing Saturn. And there was this um, kind of almost like Saturn was like the test. Saturn was like, okay, is this working? Is this not working? Like practically speaking, um, whether that's in relationships or jobs or projects, et, et cetera, um, there was a focus. The sun was focusing on practicality, Saturn. And now that um, the sun and Mars are in cancer, there's this focus on 
uh, there's this building towards opposing Pluto, which is um, depth and emotional intensity. And so, um, yeah, so it's like we had all of these tests like, OK, is this working? Is this not working? Is this broken? And then now that we've um, that we've decided what works, what we're going to commit to Saturn, what we're committed to now, we can go deeper. Yeah. Um, and it reminds me of um, something that a friend, a very dear friend told me um, last year, a while ago when uh, I was having, you know, challenges in relationship um, and a lot of fear and vulnerability and all of those things. Uh, she said to go slow and don't hold back. Mm. And I love that for this point in time. Yeah, God, that what you just said sums up these two cards perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Perfectly. <laughs> so jot that down, people. I'm writing it down myself. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's such a good, I think about it all the time. It's such a good guiding force. It's it's really perfect for, for this period of time, I think. Yeah. No, those are those are excellent words to, to live by with this energy, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so here we got this cancer new moon uh giving us all the feels. And it, trust me, it will. <laughs> um, so let's dive into some of these questions that uh, you can ask yourself around the time of, um, you know, around this time of the new moon. And so the questions I would ask, I would say, how can I gain emotional detachment to allow for steady progress? Mm -hmm. I would say... How can I surrender any worry or anxiety I have about the future by just going with the flow? Because, you know, us cancers, we haven't really said, but I'm just going to throw that in there real quick. We can be worriers. Oh, yes. <laughs> and we, mm -hmm. we get, we worry and we emotionally worry and emotional anxiety. Um, so just release that and just go, go with the flow at this time. Mm -hmm. um, I would ask, where is my intuition telling me to give a big push right now? I would ask, how may my sensitivity be renewed? How can I use it as a strength and not a weakness? I would, and then lastly, I would ask, how can I stay patient and on course with my emotional partnerships? How can I share my feelings in a more stable and reliable way? Stable. <laughs> Stable. <laughs> Emotions aren't always known for being stable. Um, but this, this moon is really asking us to tap into how we can make them stable, how we can redo our foundation to where they're in a more solid place. Mm. So, yeah. 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 Um, all right. Well, we've, uh, we've gone through our two, uh, real meaty cancer transits. Um, mm -hmm. And now we're going to move on to uh, last but not least, and what I kind of feel is a driving force for the two that we just talked about, like underlying, um, is Mars in Cancer squaring Jupiter in Libra, which we have deemed all's not fair in love and war. And this will be exact on Saturday, June 24th at 11.07 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and that will be at 14 degrees Cancer in Libra. So Shauna, share us with us the quote you have for this Mars squaring Jupiter. Yes. So this quote is by C.S. Lewis. Mm. And he says, integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is looking. Mm. And I love this so much for this Mars squaring Jupiter because Mars is action. It's what you do. And Jupiter in Libra, it is about um, the arts and beauty and relationship, but Libra is also about justice. And um, it's about this, this aspect, it's really about fighting fair. And it's about um, engaging with conflict in a way that, uh, that main, where we can maintain our integrity, where we can make sure that, um, that there is still this sense of um, fairness and where if I win, that doesn't have to take away from you. Or yes. if you win and you have more, that doesn't have to take away from me. Um, 
So, mm. so yeah, I'm just, I'm really digging that for, for this week. I love mm. that, Shauna. That's absolutely case. Yeah. Perfect point right there for that energy, you know, cause a lot of times when we see other people, you know, getting their just deserves or, you know, or like you're getting yours and you feel like, because that's the thing is, and that's why I find with Libra and a lot of times with comparison, you know, um, is that we end up comparing our own success based on other people's or they do that to us. And, uh, and one doesn't have to, there's enough for everybody. You don't have to find, uh, be in lack, uh, thinking that, you know, someone else is getting something and then I'm getting less because of that. You know, I, I really do love that. And that is, um, that is definitely a focus. Um, so that day actually, you know, there, there's some energy building as Mars is squaring Jupiter, uh, beyond the transits we just talked about earlier. Um, and that's the, uh, earlier in that actual day on Saturday, the moon is going to be conjuncting Mars. So here we have that lunar energy that is going to not only be conjuncting Mars, but squaring that Jupiter. So it's going to have, there's going to be an emotional, I mean, that, that, that Mars and Cancer is already emotional as it is, you know, its drive is based off its emotions, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we are having that extra emotional influence, uh, to this aspect, um, before it goes exact. Um, and then we also have Venus in Taurus trining Pluto that day in Capricorn. Um, mm-hmm. so, I really see a lot of re- a relationship and emotional foundations being laid here, like finding compromise um, with with people um, in a sense, like it's sharing what it is, sharing our feelings. If we're going forward with this cancer energy and those cards we were just talking about is now we're able to share, really share our feelings, uh, even when they might be at cross purposes with someone else um, in order to find that compromise. Because uh, once again, we're back into this cardinal energy. We're tapping in with this, all these transits we're talking about are cardinal energy. Um, and cardinal energy is really leadership energy a lot of the times. Mm-hmm. It's so forceful and going forward. Um, and what better leadership can you have than self leadership? Um, and so I feel that that really ties into Aries and Cancer energy is that self because it's at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the chart. Um, so how can we have self leadership now to where we can intermingle with other people and find more to compromise, but speak our own truth at the same time is mm-hmm. what I, some things I would say. Yeah, I love that. And I think it is, I see it as like this walking a tight, tight rope maybe because there's a need to make sure that you take care of yourself and that your needs are met. And, um, with Mars and cancer, yeah, you're going to be feeling that you're going to be like, what about me? This is what I need to feel comfortable. This is what I need to feel secure. And what I wonder is how can you go about that in a way that is inclusive, which is, um, Jupiter How can you go about that in a way that considers others, which is Libra? And, um, you know, uh, this is something that this whole idea of like, we can all have enough. That's something that, um, has been in conversation for me a lot lately and, um, how our current society doesn't really support that mentality. Our current society Mm -hmm. is very much based on when you have more, it's because I give to you and then I lose. Or if, if I have more, it's because I'm taking from you and I win. And it, it's, it's kind of a fucked up and damaging system because it means that we can't all be happy. We can't all have enough. Yes. And, um, and so I don't, you know, full disclosure, I don't have the answer. I don't know what the answer is, but, (laughs) um, but with, but I do feel that there is a way to, for us to, to all have what it is that we want and for us to fight fair. And, um, and I think that because this aspect between Mars and Libra is a square squares, you can't avoid what's happening. So there is something that's going to come up. There's going to be, um, maybe a conflict or something that you need to engage with. And, um, I love the quote, um, by C.S. Lewis because I think that a guiding force to navigate through this is to, to maintain integrity, to really do the right thing, even when no one is looking, because then you'll feel straight with yourself. Yeah, absolutely. 
you know, because we're once again, we're talking about Libra and balance and the analogies you were putting out before of like people winning, people losing, not having enough and take, you know, Libra is all about balance. Like, how can we find that balance to where we're all, uh, you know, get rid of the idea of winning and losing? And how about mm -hmm. existing successfully? <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, because this, this is a. You know, because we base astrology off of cycles and this is our final push. This is the closing square. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that, that chances are, you know, the same if we like, uh, uh, align it with, uh, you know, a uh, last quarter of a moon. Um, this could be an inner crisis more, uh, than an outer one. I mean, you could definitely see stuff on the outside, but it's chances are the inner agitation is going to happen first. Um, and it's going to have, it's going to cause us to act, um, in a sense. Um, because I think, especially with this final push, that there might be like an opportunity that challenges us at this time. Like it might not even mm. be like a bad thing that happens to us. It might be to where, you know, like you get a new job, but you have to relocate somewhere. You have to start a new home and that's mm -hmm. challenging. Or you've made a commitment to your partner and you've decided you want to move in with each other. And you have to give up that old life or you have to try new ways of doing things or it, it's just asking you for your own growth that you're going to have to put a final push and get out of your comfort zone. Because here we have Mars and Cancer that does does Mars and Cancer want to leave its comfort zone? Uh, no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> no. It'll fight. Back to that crab analogy. It's holding on to that rock as long as it can. And it was comfortable before. And then now the waves are here and maybe it'll stop. And, you know, but chances are you just kind of got to let go and, and grasp that opportunity. Like if you have something that is going to bring you growth at this time, but is forcing you to push yourself and get out of your own comfort zone, just do it. Just, you know, have a little once back to faith, have a little faith in life. And know that if you like put yourself in a way that you might have never done before, uh, you know, you can build a whole new foundation that's just how much stronger than where you were standing before. Hmm. Yeah, I love that, Mel. I think that's a good reminder that it, it could very well be something that's amazing, a really good opportunity, which is Jupiter. Um, but yeah, it might, there might be a little rub there. It might be a little push. It might challenge you, which is the Mars. Um, and I, so also with this, I think for the, for all transits, of course, it's beneficial to look at where this is happening in your chart to see how, um, to see what may be unfolding. But I think for this one in particular, it may be really interesting to look at where you have Cancer and where you have Libra in your chart, because that will tell you, um, if it, if it is, you know, more of an internal thing or if it is something that's more drastic, you know, if it's activating like your, um, your first house, you know, that might have more of an impact or if it's activating your 10th house or something like that. So, um, that may be really interesting to look at. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if it's activating cardinal houses, cardinal energy and cardinal houses. Yeah, you're going to see mm -hmm. outside is going to be a little more apparent what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. So it really does, as Shauna was saying, come down to your birth chart and where those positions um, are in your own makeup. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you know, like, God, that Mars and, and Cancer. And I was talking earlier in the program about our uh, for the United States, our sun being there. Mm -hmm. Um, which is going to be a very interesting, you know, here we are, yeah. we're, 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 you know, the U S is always trumped up on its own patriotism. <laughs> we're mm -hmm. like, it's just the way this place is. Um, not all us people, you know, like we're not, you know, I know we have some international listeners out there and we, we're not all walking around waving flags constantly. <laughs> um, yeah. but this is a time where, um, I, you know, I, I've, feel like something could come out for our own country or where we're going to be challenging our own relationships with other countries or how we intermingle. And yeah, we've been doing this the whole time, but these are the moments where we look for certain catalysts. Um, and I will be taking notes myself on what's happening uh, around this time as far as uh, countries are concerned, um, because it's, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting point of study. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and especially because, um, 
traditionally, um, Robert Hand has written a lot in his book. I think it's, um, it's Planets in Transit. He talks a lot about how Mars and the sun in particular are act as triggers for planets, um, for, for aspects. And so, yeah, so Mars with Jupiter and then we've got Pluto, Pluto, um, yes. approaching. So the, yeah, like if there is a trigger, like I, yeah, of course that makes sense with Mars and, and then the sun following. So it'll be very, very interesting to see what the world events are and just how everyone is feeling too. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, what troubles me and what I find interesting at the same time is that um, what's happening in the world, um, when you look at mundane astrology and how things are played out on a political level, it often seems to be the shadow manifestation of whatever yeah, I know. it is. And then, it and, is. you know, and then at a personal level, we have the wide variety because everyone gets to choose. And so, um, so I don't know what will happen, but I, I would say that, um, I'm, I'm really curious to talk about the tarot cards because I feel like they speak to this, um, this idea of fighting fair and, um, and maintaining integrity and, um, and, and engaging in a way that is honorable. And so yeah. I would just, um, encourage everyone to really sit with that because that can be very direct, you know, um, or it can be more subtle. And I think that it may be as simple as, um, having integrity with following your gut, following your intuition and what feels, um, most authentic to you, even if it's not convenient for the situation. Yes. And, uh, right quick before we go on to those tarot cards, I find that very interesting that you bring up, um, the obvious slash not so obvious point of how things in our worldview and our political arena seem to manifest in shadow aspects. And you have to ask, why is that? You know, why do we have people in power that are constantly manifesting these shadow sides of things. And what does that say about us as a people and how mm -hmm. it really, um, how that triggers our own energy to where we have that choice. Um, and how it's almost like, you know, they call people like, uh, you know, Shauna and I, and probably all you that are listening out there, they call us light workers, you know, cause here we are trying to spread this, this light <laughs> when we're just around uh, darkness a lot. Um, and, it's kind of a beautiful thing because knowing that that light exists and you see the darkness with around you, um, it almost, it, it's almost a good thing because it kind of propels you to be like, that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to be that, or I see that or like, you know, and I, I don't know. I just think that's a very interesting way. I, I could probably sit by myself and go in for hours studying that concept, to be honest. Um, mm. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting to say the least. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I think that could totally be a whole podcast in itself, but I think about that a lot. And I think that the one, um, benefit of that is that we do get to see that dark and whatever we see that, um, creates, um, that creates an activation where it's like, oh, like that person or that politician or whatever is lying or not being honest or, um, whatever the case is like, there's always this potential to reflect on how that may be something that is a part of us, um, in a very subtle way. And maybe it is, maybe it's not, but I think, um, it's, it's always an interesting reflection and, um, not to be taken literally, but just to be used it, at least for me, it helps me maintain a positive outlook on life when I look at it in that way. Like it's, it is just a reflection and, um, it can be used to understand myself when I see, um, a situation out in the world that I have a really strong reaction to. It's like, okay, how, mm. like, what is going on out there that's activating something in here? Um, so yeah. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's very interesting. You know, because here we are too with cancer. We're talking about cancer 
all these planets happening and, and how sensitive we are and how, you know, that, 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 that sensitivity in our feelings and what really we are reacting to, um, mm-hmm. really speaks to our own, uh, internal makeup. Um, and so when those, when those moments of awareness come, uh, they're really valuable, even though they can be kind of challenging, uh, cause if you don't go down that sinking, you know, ship of, um, emotional despair and you really look at like, wait, okay, why does this bother me? Or why am I triggered by this? Or why is it that I relate to this or see, you know, like there's wisdom there, um, in, in the opposite always. Um, so Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So yeah. So let's talk about some of the, the, uh, cards that we had for this Mars squaring Jupiter. Um, and at first the cards came up and I was like, huh, interesting. But when, and then I started to really paint the picture, like it just came, came in my head, like this point, this point, this point. I was like, wow, this is brilliant. Actually, this is very interesting. <laughs> um, and so that's the seven of swords as our focus and the nine of wands as our grounding. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the seven of swords really, once again, it's that guy that, uh, I think we've talked about this in past episodes, right? Shauna, we've had this card before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, that's really about, uh, there's a, an element of deception there. People holding cards and not showing you things or avoiding things and procrastinating and just not being totally in your own integ- integrity, kind of keeping something back. Um, and, you know, here we are talking about this final push and this closing square energy of Mars squaring Jupiter. And so we might be faced with something at this time to where we're avoiding something. And we're like pretending that it's going to go away. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's not. And we have to take action on it because, you know, the nine of wands is there. Um, you know, this nine is just a man just standing there. He's all bandaged up. He's fought. He's been in the battles, you know, he's done all, all the work, you know, to some extent. And it's really just one more battle until we make it, <laughs> make it to the end. And so, uh, chances are some of this energy for people out there might be, uh, getting in touch with what you might be avoiding or procrastinating and how you can give that last push and that final, you know, in that final stretch moment, uh, to what it is you've been, uh, you know, really championing in your life and like fighting for and trying to make happen. And, you know, like don't avoid certain issues. Don't cut corners at this time. Don't think that you can like get away with this. If you just like, Oh, if I over here and then that's going to come back to bite you later. Um, mm-hmm. so be above board and have a solid plan in place. Um, you know, cause the seven of swords is also about problem solving and, uh, getting your ingenuity around the challenges that you have. So, um, yes, we're going to want to get past that last hurdle <laughs> in that mm-hmm. respect. Yeah, and I think that is a danger with Mars and Cancer because Cancer is inherently passive aggressive. And so when Mars is there, it's like, okay, I want to do something, but I'm going to sidestep it like a crab. I'm not going to talk to you about the thing that I want to talk to you about, but I'm going to be like mad about it. So I'm going to go over here. And, you know, it just becomes this whole, um, this whole like weird, ambiguous situation or can. So that's, I think that's definitely a danger. Um, and then, yeah, the, the way to meet that is with courage and persistence and, um, having faith, um, leaning into that Jupiterian energy. Um, I love, uh, so whenever Mel pulls the cards, I always look at, um, one of my favorite websites is the Biddy Tarot card. Yeah. And, um, I love this, uh, these few sentences for the nine of wands, the, the guy that's all bandaged up and he's like, Oh, like one more battle. Um, she says he has the look of determination in his eye to overcome this final challenge and to reach a point of accomplishment and victory. Uh, he stands up for what he believes in and holds firm in those beliefs. Um, I mean, if that is not Mars, and Jupiter together, I really don't know yeah. what is. <laughs> it's true. And, you know, here we have that Jupiter and Libra and part of that Seven of Swords energy, um, you know, because a lot of times that Seven of Swords energy will try to go it alone. Um, and sometimes that's OK. Like if people have been dicking you around and you can't get anything done with someone else, then, yeah, cut them out and just get the job done yourself. Um, 
But at the same time, if you've been trying to, you know, because that whole nine of uh, wands, a lot of times, uh, that guy is beat up. He's not the one to go back into battle. It's time to delegate. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we can do right now with the seven of swords uh, is to really stay disciplined. And you don't need all those swords. Don't hoard, hoard the swords <laughs> right now, you know, like give <laughs> delegate things to other people. Because where's our growth being formed? That's Jupiter and Libra. And Libra is the other. And so others are here to help us at this time if we allow ourselves to delegate and um, just give up a little bit of control over the situation so that, you know, because here we are, we have have Venus uh, in Taurus trining Pluto and Capricorn, you know, that Earth energy. And Earth just loves to control things. Um, So it might be a great time to really delegate um to get that final push to like you know you've 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 fought that battle you you've you know not only are you the great leader you know that has taken all all the you know punches and are still standing but but let those other people let that support come in and carry you uh, in this last phase um Mm, yeah people are here to help you know yeah, like where where do you have that, especially since it's Venus, relate the relationship planet trining Pluto. Yeah, where do you have that support that's coming easily? Um, where you have more of those resources that are flowing in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cuz that's I mean that's a gift and that's what what I find interesting about Cancer um is that like I was saying earlier in the program is that we're givers. But one of the hardest things that we have to learn is actually receiving. We're always Mm -hmm. giving and giving and giving and giving. (laughs) But, you know, you have to receive to some extent. And who's who's uh, who's the giver of the gift? And that's that Libra energy. So chances are right now um, it could be a lesson in learning to receive things and not like trying to just go about it yourself and hoard everything over here. And like, I'll just keep these secrets to myself, you know, like, uh, get, you know, cause here we are, we are talking about these two of cups in the previous aspects and all this is happening in the week. So partnership is really tied into all this. Uh, so mm-hmm. how can we learn to receive and to delegate to others and let others help us out so that, uh, like Shauna was saying earlier, we both win. We're both, you know, like, it, it's just this balance that, you know, what do they say? Lighter, more hands make for lighter work, you know? No, like, yeah. yeah. Let people help you out. Let um, Learn to receive at this time. Like, we don't have to just give, give, give. Um, especially if you're one of those givers out there. You know who you are. <laughs> uh, we're calling you out right you, now. We're calling you right now. You <laughs> need to open your arms and sit back and let the universe give to you for once because... Uh, it's only fair. It's mm-hmm. only fair. Um, so yeah, yeah. And the more that, and the more that you receive, the more that you're nourished and then the more that you have to give. So it's this, um, ongoing cycle. Cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Always comes back to the cycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes. And especially, you know, like in that, in that idea of giving, you know, when you give and give and give, a lot of times you end up neglecting yourself because you're always giving to others. Um, so mm-hmm. now might be the time where you have to actually take issue with that, where you're seeing that pattern and you're seeing yourself maybe being walked on, walked over and you have, uh, you know, that Mars and cancer is brooding underneath, you know, taking that passive aggressive stance. But what you really have to do is be like, no, I'm going to honor what it is that I need. I'm going to take issue with you being um, just always, you know, like not giving me what I need or me not giving me what I need, you know, like taking mm-hmm. issue with yourself and your own neglect um, with yourself. Because the nine of wands, um, another facet of this card is actually being your own advocate. Like mm. a lot of times, you know, like especially in like medical scenarios, like how many times do you go to the doctor and you know, you expect them to tell you everything they need, but, uh, you might have to give them more information. You might have to push stronger for other alternatives. Um, you know, you like, or you get a bill that's bad and you know, you're like, wait, I've paid this or this is, or this is too much, or they said it was going to be this, you know, and you don't just pay it, get on the phone and be your own advocate and be like, no, I was told this. And I, I expect this, like, this is what's fair and this is what's going on, you know? Um, so don't, 
if there's any problem that's really developing at this time, don't ignore it, you know, because um, especially in relationships with Jupiter and Libra, like if something's brewing, um, don't, you know, be your own advocate and just say what it is you need to say. Don't hide anything. Don't keep any secrets. Or if you think someone's keeping something for you, get it out there in the open. Challenge that. You know, don't mm-hmm. brood with that. You know, fight if you like chances are you might have to fight for something at this time. Um, and that might be yourself. Um, cause you know, that nine of wands energy is really protecting what's already been built. You know, it's the last stage. So this final push, we might have to like fight for ourselves and be our own advocate and not uh, procrastinate and, and just go out there and <laughs> do the damn thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. I love that Mel. I think that's so important. And, and I think, yeah, like, are you, are you fighting yourself? Is that what's happening yes. here? Because so often, and I'm, I'm guilty of this so much as well, but, um, often we have way more power than we think that we do. Um, you know, do you really have to do this thing that you don't enjoy? Um, or is there like, um, a martyr kind of thing that's giving you emotional satisfaction where you're like, Oh, I'm helping so-and-so or my mom or whatever. And it's like, Oh, like it's so hard and I don't want to do it, but I'm doing it out of the goodness of my heart, you know? And then you're like all crabby about it is yeah. that happening, you know? Um, and is that like, is that really healthy? You know, you might need to do some of these things. Of course, you know, we have to be responsible and be adults and all that good stuff. But um, I find that we often have more power. We often have more control over our lives than we realize or than we're willing to take um, responsibility for. So that's something good to keep in mind, especially with the Mars Jupiter. Yes, I totally mm-hmm. agree with that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we have some it's. This aspect sounds very interesting to me, and I feel like it drives the week, to be honest, even though we have these big things like the solstice and the new moon. I feel like this is that just that underlying layer that's driving um, a bunch of things. And I mean, May, Mars driving, (laughs) I suppose. (laughs) Um, But I, I really connect with this energy for some reason, and I feel like um, it's a big piece to this week's puzzle. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so some questions to take away with you for this uh, Mars and Cancer squaring Jupiter and Libra. I would ask, where do I need to make a final push in my life to experience true growth? I would ask, how can I embrace my growing pains? You know, we all have them. So how can we, how can we embrace them and nurture ourselves even when we're challenged? I would ask, Despite these challenges, how can I nurture the new opportunities that come my way? I would ask, where may I need to fight for myself and what is fair? Or where may I need to compromise? And then last but not least, I would ask, what may I need to work on to develop a stronger foundation with my loved ones? How can I feel Mm. secure enough to open up and engage? Mm. Love that. So so we're all opening up, um, you know, as we wrap this episode up today. Uh, In conclusion, we're really just all opening up. We're opening up to our own emotions. We're opening up and able to uh, be more vulnerable and share ourselves in partnerships. Um, you know, uh, we got the summer stol- solstice, which is giving a seasonal rebirth, you know, that new moon in cancer. We got all the feels, all the feels <laughs> we have it in. <laughs> and then that Mars and square Jupiter is really, you know, saying, you know, all's not fair in love and war. Stand up for yourself or compromise wherever that sits for you. Um, so Shauna, do you have an action item for them to take away this week, uh, with all this energy that we're having? Yes. So I have, uh, two, two action items in a sense. Um, these are books because I love books. So these are books that may be really, um, interesting and inspiring and enlightening for this week. So you might actually have one of these laying around. You might find it at the library or you might, um, go on Amazon. Um, 
The first book is The Artist's Way. It's by Julia Cameron. And I love this book in general, but I especially love it for this time because uh, she has a lot of exercises in here that relates to inner child work. Mm. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's one of those where even if you, um, and this is an old, it's an old book too. So you can find it at the library. Even if you just kind of like leaf through it, there's always, um, things that are inspiring and that help you connect to your inner world. Um, and then the second book that, um, that I think is, uh, really helpful for this week too, is Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. And I love this so much because she talks um, about shame a lot, but in this book, she also talks a lot about vulnerability Mm. and she talks about how, um, our capacity for vulnerability is, is, um, correlated directly to our capacity for connection. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And it's so fascinating. I love the way that she writes because it's, it's clear. It's, it's, um, it's relatable and it's, it's practical. So, um, so yeah, so she talks a lot in there about how the, when you can be vulnerable, when you can feel, and when you can hold those feelings for yourself, then you can actually connect with others more deeply. Um, and that's like the essence of what we've been talking about, yes, you know, like no, feeling that's... and then like relating to others. So, um, again, like both of these are super popular. You don't have to go out and buy them. You can find them at the library or, you know, like uh, you can be resourceful. So, um, those are, I would say like, get one of those, especially the daring greatly is, is really excellent. So, well, yeah. and if you're interested in the artist way, I believe Shauna, don't you do a program with that, um, book, right? I do. Yeah. So if, if you're interested, you can definitely contact me. Um, and, and I like full disclosure, I mentioned that book, not even as a plug. I just love the book. And I think that, um, no, I'm, pl- it, I'm plugging you. Wonderful. It wasn't yeah, her. So- it was me. I was like, Hey, don't you do that? No, that's great. <laughs> I do. Yeah. So I do a program where it's, um, working through the book over the course of 12 weeks and, um, it's really great. So if, if you have any interest in working through that, um, in a group process, we do it online. Um, you can always reach out to me. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it helps to have that facilitating, especially when you have all these exercises to do, like it really, um, helps to connect here. We are, we're once again, we're talking about connecting with others. You know, this is just <laughs> another facet of that really. Um, so mm-hmm. I find that, I find that very interesting and it's always fun to connect with others and, um, and grow oh, yeah. ourselves. We we grow together. You know, here we are, Jupiter and Libra. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, those are wonderful suggestions uh, to take away for a little reading um, during this um, this week's cycle um, and just the Cancer cycle in general. You know, getting in touch with that vulnerability in order for us to really connect. I think that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, okay. Well, I think this has been a fabulous episode. We'll just do a good quick little plug just in case you want to know where to reach us. Um, mm-hmm. you can find me at energeticprinciples.com. Um, and you can find me on Instagram at energetic principles where I do daily updates, uh, for the astro weather, um, and how that's connecting with fun pictures and, and such as that. Um, and Shauna, where can they find you? Yeah. So the best place where I'm most active is Instagram. You can find me at Neo Feminine Astrology. And you can also find more about me on my website, neofeminine.com. Yes. And we both do personal readings. Um, mm-hmm. As we've been talking about through this episode, you know, these are all generalizations based on the energy um, for the planet. But how that connects with you and your natal chart uh, is a little bit different, um, relevant, but different and more specific. So if you want to find out um, what might be going on in your chart, uh, either one of us are here to help you with that. And you can find all the information uh, to connect with us and the services we offer on our web pages. Um, mm-hmm. And we welcome any question you might have. Feel free to reach out because that's what we're here for. We're here for connection. That's why we do what we do is um, to develop a greater connection, uh, not only to ourselves, but with all of you out there um, and I think it's a beautiful thing. What do you think, Shauna? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, 
this is so this is still fairly new for us a new project and the the amount of positive feedback has been really great. Um, it's so wonderful to hear your comments and to hear when you're sharing us with your friends. Um, so, you know, keep that coming. We love that. We love to get, um, these messages out to as many people as possible. And, and, you know, we just love hearing from you because that helps us create better content too. So if there's something about this episode that you really liked, um, let us know. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely like the more that we can create conversations and dialogue around this astrology and to make it more meaningful. Um, that's what it's really about. Exactly. Because I mean, here we are talking about community and connecting and being, you know, <laughs> sharing with others. And uh, we would love it if you shared with us. And if you like what we do, tell a friend because of the best way to um really share something and your enthusiasm enthusiasm for something is to, you know, uh, tell the people that you love so that it just spreads the good word and we would be more than grateful for that. Um, so yeah, I hope that everybody has a wonderful week as we enter this gem, uh, excuse me, cancer season, cancer. Finally. <laughs> yes. Get that Gemini out of there. No offense. Gemini. But, um, we but love we're you, ready Gemini. for you. We love you. We love you. Um, <laughs> So, yes. Uh, so, uh, sending lots of love, Shauna. How about you? Giving all yes. that love. <laughs> all the, not, not all the love. I'm going to keep some for myself, but I'm giving. Like, that's that. right. <laughs> that's right. You can't have it all. You can just have that's <laughs> have that. that really just epitomized our whole, uh, our whole episode in that one little quip. So yeah. <laughs> perfect. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time. May the stars be with you. Namaste.